Welcome to Midnight Scribes, Creative Vibes, where we interview all the great bronies in the community and chat to them about what they do and why we love them. Today we've got an absolutely fantastic guest here on the show and, uh, well, I've got to be honest, he's trying to nick my job, or am I nicking his? I actually don't know which way this is working anymore, but he's an absolute fan of the show. I absolutely love him to bits. I've been on his show a few times. From the MBS show is only Norman Zanzo. Norman, how are you doing? Hey there, Kyle. How are you doing, man? I'm good, yeah, can't complain yourself. I'm okay, a bit tired, but who can complain about it, right? Oh, yeah, nothing to complain about, but to be to be fair, I mean, it's, what time is it in Malaysia? Uh, 2am. You're allowed to be tired, that is that is allowed. 2am is a perfectly legit time. It is 7pm here in Bonnie, Scotland, and I'm about to fall asleep, so I'm going to wrap up the show. Um, goodbye, everyone, and remember to please subscribe. Uh, All right. See ya. <laughs> Play the jingle. <laughs> uh, that was short. Uh, so now we do we do. <laughs> now, what we do is the bit after the credit sequence, the bit that Diane doesn't get to edit. This is our bit. We get to do whatever we like, Norman. You're a talk show Yay. host. I'm a talk show host. This is where we get to have fun, and we have to talk a little bit about your talk shows, the MBS show. I mean, uh, tell us something about it, Norman. I mean, it's you've been going for, what, 170 episodes? Yeah, 170, and it's been going on for almost three years now. I won't say almost. It has reached three years. So we've been around for a long while now, and i got no idea when we're going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're just going to keep going and keep going until... It- Eventually, it's just three old people in their wicker chairs around the world going, Oh, I remember. Oh, that was a great episode. Yeah, I remember Slice of Life. It was a great episode. Not like the current one we have, Slice of Life Part (laughs) 3. And of course, you'll be able to talk about your favourite ponies, favourite episodes, and of course, your favourite comic. But I'll tell you what, since you're going to be asking that question in 50 years, Mm -hmm. in episode number 5,274 (laughs) of the MBS show, why don't you tell us now, uh, just for reference sake, I mean, what's your favourite pony? Ah, well, here's an interesting answer, because when I ask people on the show, I always give them multiple choices, and... I'm going to give that myself here. Uh, my multiple choices are first for main six is going to be Fluttershy. She's so cute. I just love love her. For favorite um, background, it will be Derpy. And sh- fun fact, she also mascot for the show. And for favorite, um, what do you call supporting character, um, Princess Luna. Can never have enough of her. She's also so awesome. I don't know why. Well, to be fair, she is a princess, and, you know, I mean, what can you say? I mean, Prin- Princess Luna, Princess of the Night, I mean, that doesn't get much cooler than that. True, true. I mean, I think you can go wrong with Princess Luna. Look at all the episodes she's been in. It's pretty awesome. And the uh, adaptation by Katie Cook and Emily Price in the comic, she's fun to read. So, yeah. Well, I've never actually had the opportunity to really read the comics. You know, I mean, obviously I've been out of the fandom for a wee while and, you know, I'm trying to get myself back in. So, I mean, in terms of, like, how are the comics and the, the TV show quite similar then, in your opinion, as a fan? Oh, no. Um, How do I put this? We, on the show, we always mention this where the show is tier one canon and the comics are tier two canon and so on and so on. So, in the comics, things take some inspiration from the show from like their first from for the comics was the return of Queen Chrysalis so this was obviously something way before after sorry way after Queen Chrysalis has been blasted off into space and now she returns to take a revenge and that comic was not bad and the whole setup here is Green Chrysalis wants to take revenge and she'll almost succeed, but in the end, the good guys win, like per usual. And in that scene or in that comic, Queen Chrysalis was really violent to one creature. I'm not going to spoil it, so whoever's interested, go read it. It's really fun. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you're selling it to me quite well. I'll have to have a read of it at some point because, like I said, I've been out of the community for a wee while, you know, and I'm, I'm rediscovering the Brony community and you know, getting into it far more than I did the first time around. You know, I've met yourself, I've met James, met 
uh, all, all sorts of people. I mean, I can't name check them all because, uh, well, I've got to keep names hidden away for the future episodes we're doing. <laughs> got to keep some surprises out of the way. But in, ter- but in terms of the, I mean, uh, the Brony community, I mean, I've noticed a few changes myself, but as a long-standing member of the community, I mean, and as an authority, I mean, you've been running your show for three years. You must have um, an opinion on the Brony community, perhaps how it's changed, how it is now. Where do you reckon it'll go in the future? I mean, I bet you didn't think we were going to ask you a real question, but still. <laughs> well, um, well, first and foremost, I'm no authority. I'm just some random guy who speaks a lot. And where, how do I see the fandom now? It, sure, it has changed, uh, but I don't see it that much. I, I feel it, but I don't see it. And what I mean by that is the attitude towards the people, the fans, towards each other and whatnot, because in the early years, it's really uh, f- like really fans being friendly to one another, like, hey, I like this, you like that, let's help each other out and do stuff. But now it's more of the senior members are like, hey, i am been here, like hipsters kind of min- mindset. So I-, I don't know, I mean, it's hard for me to judge people on that, but I can't tell either sorry I, I can't tell by that like for me everything's the same I've never been too deep into it yes you've never been too deep enough to get involved in some of the drama that comes up occasionally because every once in a while there's usually some sort of brouhaha as it were in the community that tries to shake things up here or there mm, that's true that's true but the thing is I don't take notice because most of the dramas, like if you notice, they come from uh, Pony Chan or either EQD or even the YouTubes and probably some Facebook groups or the Twitters and all those places. But I, how do I put this? How do I put this? I put myself out of it. Like I'm on the bleachers looking in and just viewing because. Even though I talk to a lot of people, I know a lot of people, but I don't participate that much within the spectrum of the fandom. Like, I try to when I can, but things are just going too fast for me. Like, it's so much to keep up with. Oh, definitely. I mean, there's always something happening every other week. And, I mean, to be fair, your show covers a fair bit of the official stuff. I mean, um, I've been on your show a few times and, you know, we've always, you know, covered some of the latest stories that have been going on in the community and so on. And trying to keep up with that and doing that as a is it a weekly show or bi-weekly. I lose track of how many episodes. <laughs> it's a weekly show. We try to do an episode every week. We record on Saturday and episodes goes live on Tuesday. And where can we find those episodes? Just out of curiosity. I, I mean, I don't want to suggest we're doing a plug, but... Oh, yeah, those episodes can be found on the mbsshow.com. If you're a iTunes user or podcast listener, you can, well, search for us on the iTunes and Stitch Radio. And also you can catch us on the YouTubes or at youtube.com slash the MBS show. And if you're into the Pony Radio thing, you can also catch us on PonyVilleLive.com. So you're fairly around. I mean, there's plenty of ways of catching you if we want to happen to watch your show, listen to your show, hear about your show. Perhaps talk to the people who were on the show. I mean, I'm talking to you right now, Norman, and let me tell you, it is an honour to have someone as experienced as you. I mean, I feel as an amateur talk show host that I should not be talking to you like this. I mean, I feel this is not the right way to be doing this. You should be leading the show. No, no, no. I mean, what you're doing right now is... Okay, I mean, the thing about talk shows is people don't want to... Well, some people, they don't want to listen to random people rambling on for hours and hours. Like, 15 minutes is the max for people. And I don't know how I do it, but I just enjoy talking to people for a long amount of time. For example, maybe an hour or so. But some people don't share my enthusiasm with that. But I suppose it just depends on the, um, I mean, they say, like, when it comes to, like, content creation, particularly on YouTube, that people only have, like, a sort of attention span of the first 30 seconds, and if you can hook them then, you can keep them going, but if you don't catch them then, you kind of drift off to watch cat videos or something like that. You <laughs> yeah, know what that's I mean? True, that's true, that's true. That's all it is. There's, like, 1% 
on the internet there's one percent real content and there's 99 percent cat videos that's how the internet works that's true that's true i mean the, the thing is and i do agree with um you where the first few seconds is the key part to grabbing your audience unfortunately for me i still have not well I still haven't known the secret recipe for that because as much as I record and do a show, my numbers have not been well, up there, if I were to say. But you've got a consistent, I mean, you've got a consistent fan base, you know, you always get people coming along and enjoying the show and you enjoy the show you make. I mean, would you, do you feel, I mean, you've done 170 episodes you know, and being on the periphery of the fandom in your sort of own words. I mean, do you feel then that it's more important to enjoy what you're doing in terms of your podcast or whatever it is you happen to be doing rather than chasing the fame, as it were? Mm. And here's the thing that I always say to people, I always tell people, when you're doing something, do it because you want to do it, not because you want to become popular or you want to get well-known because... If you're doing it just because you want to get well known, you're going to hit that wall pretty fast because you're just doing it. You're not doing it out of love. You're doing it out of, well, popularity. And that is not a good sign or not, that's not a good way to start. Hmm. Well, how did, um, how did you get into podcasting out of curiosity? Well, it all started out when I was in this Facebook group, when I was in a Bruni Facebook group in Malaysia. We had a meetup, we talked, and I had this thing where I like these guys, I think I can work with them. You know what, let's try to do a podcast. I got no idea how to, but let's try. The first premiere episode we had was just a bunch of guys talking about the episode where Shirley and Big Mac fall in love. Oh, I love that I episode. That one. It was that, Perfect Stallion. Yeah, I think so. The song is Perfect Stallion, but I don't remember the episode. Something to do with Hearts and Hoof Days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but that episode was a wreck. <laughs> <laughs> so it took me a few tries to get the formula right. And on February 25th, the first recording of the NBA show was up. And yeah, there it is. And, uh, of course, you're not just a solo act on the NBA show. You do have three very talented uh, co-hosts. I mean, do you want to tell us a little bit about them? I mean, I don't want to take away the limelight from yourself, Norman. But no, no. Yeah. It's cool, it's cool. Like, um, I'm going to talk about the current crew now because if I were to talk about the previous crew, we, we'll be here for quite some time. <laughs> but the current crew now consists of James Cork, uh, Romwell, or as he like to be known as Relicious, and Kikas King. He's a very awesome Brony reactor. So all three of this, well, how do I put it? They're pretty random when you think about how I got them. A Brony from Malaysia gathering someone from Spain, Litu Lithuania, I think. Yeah, Lithuania, and also from UK. So how? <laughs> <laughs> You see, look at that, a talk show host, you're already asking the important questions. Yeah, I don't know, I mean, it's pretty random, like, the model for this show is just go for whoever I want, and if I enjoy them, I'll talk to them, and I just ask them, you want to be on? Like, that's cool. And I just remember one more person, I, silly me, I forgot, um, Silver Quill, I forgot to, to insert him, uh, haven't been recording <laughs> with him. And obviously you've had a fair few guests on as well throughout the time. I mean, are there any particular guests that you've particularly enjoyed? Uh, I mean, like you've obviously must have had a fair few special guests on throughout the weeks mm -hmm. that you've been doing the show. I mean, any standout or is that the sort of number one question I should not be asking the no, host no, of the no. MPN I mean, show? <laughs> uh, those, I, I, I got those questions and I'm... I'm guessing you're referring to people like Amy Keating Rogers, uh, M.A. Larson, go back his book, and Annalie Heed, and also Dusty Cat, and, well, why not Silver Quill again? So I I'm guessing you're going to ask me how I got them? Well, I've... 
look at this. You see, I tell you, the professional talk show host, you're actually coming up with the questions. Why, I tell you what, why don't I shut up? I'll let you ask the questions and answer them. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'm going to no, take a back seat and have a drink. <laughs> no, it's, it's this how I, that's how my mind thinks when I do interview people. And yeah, I mean, for them, I just ask. Like, seriously, I just ask. I go around finding uh, public information where I can get into contact with them. So with Larson, I went to his website. There's a thing where email me if you have any questions or something. So I just did. For Imikiting Rogers, same thing. Dusty, uh, funny enough, on the DeviantArts. So I just did that and I just asked. And if you're, sorry, if you're a podcaster or you're a person who is in this feel or who is interested in doing something similar like this, be prepared to get rejected because sometimes people just are busy, are not interested or couldn't make it because they just don't have the time. And back to your question, Kyle, about most memorable guests or whatnot, I think that honor goes to you. Oh, I'm gonna. Oh, that's so good. Sorry, hang on. Excuse me. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go jump on the bed. Just give me a moment. Talk about yourself. Take over the show for three seconds. Well, the, the reason oh. why is. <laughs> booyah! 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 Yeah! 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 yeah. Oh, no, he's gonna have fun with this one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just uh, gonna recompose myself. I thought I'd be professional here. So, uh, yeah, I've heard about this Midnight Scribe on your show. I mean, yeah, yeah, why don't you tell yeah. a little bit about him? I'm just going to sit here and listen and enjoy. <laughs> yeah. The, the reason with that one is, it's funny, really, because when we invited you on, it was an impromptu situation where, hey, you want to join us, uh, Sugar Dove? And she said, yeah, but I have this guy with me. I don't know. Like, you think it's okay with him to join in? Yeah, sure, why not? The more, the merrier. And you guys had a microphone set up where you duct tape. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, yeah. I remember that because I was holding this stupid mic. Well, I say stupid microphone. You know, it was, the microphone was fine, but like I had to hold it still as a rock. And oh, yeah. every time I moved, the thing went into static. And I was like, yeah, oh, we can't do that. this. So we <laughs> gaffer taped the, the <laughs> microphone to the stand because that was the only way we could keep the sound constant. <laughs> Yeah, so but the first... thing is, sorry, sorry. No, 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 you know, no, no, yours. The thing is, the, the thing is, when I recorded that or when we did that, was like, hmm, we have Kyle here on. You know what? Let's try, let's try, let's try to do a sneak guess in. Like, yeah, you know, he's not expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> it was very cunning. I mean, I didn't expect it. And of course, I mean, like you said, it was impromptu, but it was so much fun being on your show. I mean, I've always enjoyed it. I think I've been on like two, three times now. I, I so. think so, two or three times. And funny enough, the format has changed from the very beginning because, well, my crew said that the show was a bit awkward was a bit how do i say awkward and a bit stiff where we go from point to point to point where back then we had to follow this um prompt where okay we started off with introductions we started off with housekeeping and then we go to the news and then guest time it was very um schedule like so it it didn't flow naturally because Every time when we said stuff like, oh, you know, that's our guest for this week. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. So you can just imagine how that was, right? And oh, that yes, on, no, grand. Um, yeah, so you can just imagine how awkward that was or how immersion-breaking it is. So we improved a bit and I think we may have found a formula now where we just shoot from the hip. We just go into it talking and relating to our weeks and whatnot, and then we just try to segue into the news. Like, for example, we talk about video games in the first half, and then we talk about Steam, and then we talk about money, and then we talk about toys, like pony toys and whatnot, and then we go on, and then we reminisce about bad movies from the 80s like Gem and the Hologram and then we go into a movie about the ponies it's something like 
that. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's quite freeform. And the great thing about it is that um, on the show, like when you listen to it and when you're a part of it, you can tell that everyone is just really good friends and gets along. There's a lot of mm-hmm. love in that show. True that. True that. And that that is one of the best honours I think can possibly be bestowed onto yourself, Norman, and onto your show. It is such a great environment, you know, to watch and to be a part of because, you know, there's a lot of negativity floating around, you know, not in the community necessarily, but just in general. And it's great to enjoy something like your show where it is just pure enthusiasm, a bit of craziness thrown in. Some nice pony stuff for good measure, and you know it all comes together so well. And of course, if listeners, if you happen to be watching the show or get a chance to watch it, I guarantee you it is well worth your time. Especially any episode where Midnight Scribes in it. Honestly, <laughs> whoever shot. <off. laughs> true that. True that. True that. I mean, uh, for we just knew each other for a short while now, and somehow we became close friends. We played Splatoon together, and that was fun. Yeah, I mean it's. I, We've only known each other for a couple of weeks, and yet, you know, like I say, we've been playing Splatoon, we've been playing games on Steam, we've uh, done a few shows together, chatting most days. I mean, it, it, you know, I mean, it's. I, I, I've maintained this before. I think I mentioned this with James uh, when I was interviewing him, but I've always maintained this. I think that's part of the power of the fandom is that everyone has that kind of. I'm trying to find the right word. Attraction, not quite attraction, eh, but yeah, that that friendship element. You know, we, I mean, mm. we have to in that mythos of the show, the idea of friendship is magic, and kind of really gone to town with it. Yeah, and that's. I think I might have broken the secret to it, or I at least I might have found the reason for it is because, well, think about it this way: uh, you and me would have never met unless we were into something. For example, you're a big classic video game hobbyists. So, if I was into that realm, I would have probably met you. But because of ponies, we met in another way. Uh, Like, probably, I would say the Venn diagram of meeting people. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, definitely. I mean, it's that... I mean, there's always that idea of the six degrees of separation. There's always a way of kind of getting in contact with someone. But, I mean, it's definitely right that being part of this fandom is what made it happen. I mean, if I wasn't friends with Sugar Dove, with Diane... I wouldn't have ended up on that show randomly with yourself, wouldn't have met yourself, wouldn't have met the other uh, people on the show and other people in the fandom, and wouldn't have gotten as engrossed into it as I would have done otherwise. So, you know, I mean, it's actually your fault that I'm doing this and that I'm part of the fandom. It's actually your fault. What did so I do? You brought me on the show. You've made yeah. me... Be- you've got me an addict. You've made me an addict. <laughs> I really need him. Uh... Totally not take responsibility. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, I think it's only fair since uh, since you're my guest and mm-hmm. we both have video games, we both like Splatoon, we both mm-hmm. have a Wii U. Oh, true I, that. I think it's only fair that we have an entirely impromptu and in no way proper quiz on the Wii U. <laughs> ah, okay. Just nothing too complex. Uh, I just want to see kind of what, how good your knowledge is and just see whether... <laughs> How compatible we are in Wii U-dom-ness. All right, let's, thing. let's see, let's see. Uh, we don't have any theme music. I mean, uh, if Sugar Dove is as good a producer as I know she is, she'll probably have some sort of cute theme song ditty that she can pop in here that'll sound great. If not, mm-hmm. I'll do one right now. There we go, we've got a theme song quiz now. Yay! And question one for yourself, Norman, for 10 points. What is the best-selling Wii U game oh, in the wow. world? Oh, wow. I'm going to go for Smash Bros. Smash Bros? Oh, you're so close. It's actually it's up there, but it's not Smash Bros. It's actually Mario Kart 8. Oh, I, okay. I believe the last time I checked it, it sold around about 4.5 million units. Wow, okay. And in a year, I think, yeah, actually just over a year, it got released in... Um, May last year, and it sold four and a half million. So, sorry enough to complain about, but Smash Brothers isn't that far behind. I mean, the first party Wii U games have been supporting that console like nothing else. Yeah, the the first party thing, like Nintendo has never been friendly towards the third party developers, but their first romp with the Wii U, like one of um, first party, no third party leaders who just love to jump on 
the first party or the first bandwagon is Ubisoft and their game Zombie U was not bad from what I heard. Oh, Zombie U, well worth uh, buying if you get the chance, anyone. I mean, you can get it for about five, six pounds in the UK and mm-hmm. probably about, around about the equivalent currency elsewhere. I mean, it's a cheap game to get, very worth it, very good horror game, although very short as well, actually. It'll only take a couple of minutes to, uh, not a couple of minutes, that'd be a extremely short game, a couple mm-hmm. of hours to complete it, but it's definitely worth um, a purchase if you happen to get the chance. But I'll tell you what, then, uh, in terms Here's a question for you then, because we know that Zombie U was a Ubisoft uh, exclusive for the console, but what game by Ubisoft was meant to be an exclusive for the Wii U? Oh, wow. Was meant to be an exclusive for the Wii U? Yep, it was meant to be an exclusive, and then it ended up going multi-platform. Uh, let me see. Skylanders? Sky? No, not Skylanders. Skylanders was a multi-platform one. It's it's Ubisoft again. Stick along their track and you'll, you'll hit it. It, it. You'll kick yourself once you realise Huh, I got no idea because Prince of Persia, no. Prince of Persia, <laughs> no it idea. hasn't even been released. Ah, but no, it's not Prince of Persia. Rayman Legends. Oh, Rayman. All right, all right. That was meant to be a Wii U exclusive, and then they decided after Zombie U didn't quite get the sales they were expecting to make a multi platform and spread the goodness of Rayman to the, the rest of the world. But uh, I'm still a little bit annoyed with that. But Ubisoft do have a bit of a reputation for that because, you know, the original Rayman back in 95? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, yeah. Was made, that was meant to be an Atari Jaguar exclusive. <laughs> there uh, it is. Ubisoft. Yeah. Odd company. I don't get it. But actually, I do have Rayman on the Atari Jaguar. Personally, oh. I love it. All right, all right. But that's just me. That's just like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a geek like that. You know, I'm a bit of a nerd. But, eh... Uh, here is question number three, your third and final mm-hmm. question. And I realise I've not actually given done the Quizmaster voice. <laughs> is, normally I do like a sort of gravelly voice, but I haven't done that. I've been so engrossed in you, Norman. I actually just want to chat with you like a friend and not like a Quizmaster. <laughs> so it's you know cool. what? So you know what? I'm not going to make this a question. I'm just going to make this a, actually it is a question. <laughs> what do you think of Star Fox Zero? Oh wow, Star Fox Zero. Um, I. I excited can't wait i've seen good stuff want to buy i think that's about right i mean I, i'll tell you what i'm doing right now but because i can't you know i've got to contain my excitement so i'm just mm-hmm. going to do this for the medium of being very quiet <laughs> okay oh, i have a question for you then since you're into retro gaming um how many batteries does the game gear use Game Gear uses. Uh, um, I'll tell you what. Give me a second. I've got the Game Gear literally within no, reach. No, no cheat. No cheating. <laughs> I'm not cheating. This is entirely legit. <laughs> I'm allowed to do this because I think the Game Gear. I think has four, but I could be wrong, and I want to know for sure because I'm not getting beaten on a quiz on my own show. Six. <laughs> Cheater. I'm not cheating. I'm not cheating. Well, I mean, uh, I mean, you could say I'm cheating. I, I would say I'm phoning a friend. That's what I'm doing. But yeah, six batteries. And you're listen. If you want to quiz me, quiz me on your own show. In fact, tell us you can quiz me on the NPS show. Invite me on again. You're more than welcome to do it. Uh, I will. I will. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to have to wrap it up there. I think that's all we've got time for for the moment. But Norman, thank you so much for coming on. I mean, it's been a blast as always. <laughs> no problem, man. No problem, man. And well, if you if you want, you can just come on to my show. We can do we can do crazy stuff for longer. <laughs> oh, no, I like the idea of that. Hey, listen, guys, if you're seeing this, tune in on Saturday. I'm going to be there. <laughs> Yay. But I'll tell you what, we shall wrap up the show tonight. Uh, my thanks to Norman for joining us. Uh, Tune in next time where we'll have a guest whose name I'm not going to reveal right now because, uh, well, it's a little special. So the final word from Midnight Scribe is, please subscribe. <laughs>